live I think so hi ladies so I am here with another commentary brief commentary on level up and that is a surprising component that I don't think a lot of us are ready for and um, I think that component is related to conservative values. So one of the things that, um, hey, Tasha, hey, Amanda, thank you. I'm out here being extra. It's a Saturday. Just went to the grocery store. I'm about to walk into Lowe's, but guess what I did? I got myself dressed. And... Um, got these boots on hunty because it is fall let me see if y'all can see these boots and this skirt can y'all see these boots so i'm doing this today going into lows but at any rate i'm being extra for no reason one of the things that i share with young ladies and i've recently started mentoring young ladies and um, who want to better their lives. And one of the things that's probably the most not talked about <laughs> subject, but that um, is something that is so critical and something that I would have never believed. Excuse the nails, honey. I'm going on Monday. My whole nail fell off. And I got to deal with this on Monday because I can't do it. I got family coming in. Um, is that the idea of conservatism. And so what that means for a person like myself who was hyper liberal, hyper, you know, Democrat, though didn't even take the time to vote, but I was definitely on this mindset that I had to be in this space where I was incredibly vigilant about everybody's struggle, everybody's victimization, everyone's story. And that was like the thing to do as a black woman coming up. But one thing that I noticed as a black woman coming up that having those ideologies set me up for mammying, um, Thank you, Tasha. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and being in a space where I was enabling grown males to remain as children, to have excuses for everything in life, uh, it, it was a hard road. And when I tell you this, and when I mentor the young ladies that um, I have taken on with great love and respect, is that I didn't have this. So at the age of 48, I'm at a space where I feel like I can contribute to the conversation at least. And one of the things that was most surprising, even amongst people who claim that or call themselves Democrats, is that they have very conservative values as it relates to family, as it relates to income and wealth, and what is necessary for building wealth. So even if they are Democrats on the surface, and that's the way that they've always voted, but at the end of the day, what they really value is conserving. So if you've never had money, <laughs> you, don't, you don't care about conserving. But if you have money, if you've built yourself up from scratch, or if you were born into money and you understand the perks that come with it, um, it is it behooves you to understand how to conserve it and what comes into play. And once you get beyond the rhetoric of, oh, all Republicans, let's say, are racist, all Republicans are this and that way, once you get beyond the rhetoric and you actually have conversations with people who are focused on conserving their wealth, you might come to find out that they are not the 
lynching KKK group that you thought that they would be because your Democratic friends have painted this picture of them. And I'm not saying that it's 100% one way or the other, but I do want you to understand, ladies, as you elevate your lifestyle, as you elevate your desires for a better lifestyle, that's going to require you coming into contact with people who are focused on maintaining the wealth that they have. It's going to require you coming into contact and focus with people who have had a different life than you've had, who've had a different upbringing that you've had, who are focused on maintaining wealth. And one of the things that is really, really important about maintaining wealth is maintaining families. So isn't it curious that the demographic of people who have been the poorest who have had the most issues are also the same demographic of people whose families have been torn apart. And so I won't get into a, you know, political discussion about how that came into play and all of the things, hi Levon, the things that are happening to create these situations. But at the end of the day, I know just from my own personal perspective, the black family was the most powerful um, and the most viable when during the Black Wall Street days, during the times of the 40s and 50s when family was important, when marriage was important, when men were around to raise the next generation, um, when work was valuable and valued, those were the times when we found the, the greatest success. And now all of a sudden, because, you know, Everybody's extra. Nobody wants to work. Nobody wants to, I'm not saying nobody, but I'm just saying it's a general theme that I find that a lot of times it's like night and day, the stories, the stories that we tell ourselves, the stories that um, we embellish in order to maintain our sense of self. Um, what, okay, hold on, let me read that. There's a way to do it collectively and cooperatively without it be having to be GOP or right. And, and because you know what, the thing that, um, sis, thank you for sharing that because the thing that I value most as I began to explore without feeling indicted, without feeling like, I'm being shot with daggers. When I began to explore um, the open-minded politics of a certain level of people that they were so against slamming Democrats or slamming Republicans. Like they just wanted to be independent thinkers. They just wanted to embrace conversation, embrace, um, you know, constructive conflict so that we, it's another way of saying it, embrace debate, but without death threats and killing people. Like that was the thing that I was like, oh, I grew up thinking that all Republicans or independent party people were gonna kill me, that they were KKK people and oh my God. And so I never entertained a conversation with them. And now because of internet, because of YouTube, we are finding people from all walks of life who are exploring conversation without sending a death threat at the same time. And a lot of ladies, I feel like in the, in the groups that I'm in and in and, and the discussions that I'm having are Democrats by birth, you know, my grandma was Democrat. My great-grandmother was Democrat. So I'm a Democrat. And you don't even really think about the policies. But it's so interesting that when you want to level up, when you want to deal with levels of hypergamy, you're going to be dealing with people who are actually Republicans and who are not evil, you know, warlocks. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what people are thinking, but to be honest... When you look at where did your life lead you as a raging 
leftist liberal as I was in in college, um, always angry, always looking for something to scream about, always looking for another reason to be a victim. Um, first of all, <laughs> it has nothing to do with the law of attraction. If you are a victim of everything, you are not actually working with the law of attraction. If you are feeling as if, you know, you are powerless and if you don't fight and be angry and in this agitated emotional state that nothing will change in your life, that also goes against the tenets of the law of attraction. Um, and it's, it's an amazing experience to understand that wealth and conservative values, just in terms of conservation. Whether you want to conserve the climate, you want to conserve positive values, whether you want to conserve um, family values, whether you want to conserve your money, that is not evil. That's not horrible. That's my view. If I want to conserve money, if I want to conserve my femininity, if I want to conserve your family values, if I want to conserve the ideology that marriage is a good thing and that marriage promotes wealth, if I want to conserve all of that, then I'm not going to be in a space where I'm trying to tear it down. And I'm going to be in a space where I am communing with other individuals who feel the same way. And if you are a millionaire, and if you have built your company from scratch, and you have a raving Democrat telling you that you having spent the last 25 years with four hours of sleep, building your company, supporting employees and their families and their family health, and you've done all of that, and now you have to give more than half of your income away to taxes, or to those who have not built their wealth, those who are just raving lunatics in these colleges and who want a socialist ideology and say that everybody should be rich or everybody should be poor, you're gonna have a different perspective if you built it yourself. But if you come from a culture that you don't build anything and you don't appreciate wealth and what comes with it, then you're going to be on the total different end of the spectrum. But as a single mom, as a um, woman who worked from home, I've had multiple businesses, nowhere near millionaire status in my own businesses, but I'm saying I know what it what went into building that, what went into building my brand, building the business, customer service. I know what went into it. And so I'm trying to imagine myself as having reaped in millions from my own business and then somebody telling me that, oh, I need to give half of it away because some college kid on their socialist program says that I don't have a right to enjoy um, the benefits of the company that I've built. Exactly, Tracy, you do have a right to change your mind. And I, I love the fact that the grace and the fluidity of life allows us the ability to change our minds. It allows us the ability to become new, to become like new, and to enjoy wealth. And part of femininity, part of graceful femininity is understanding that we are walking money. We are walking wealth. So what comes out of our wombs in terms of children, in terms of um, wealth building ideas, in terms of being able to maintain and sustain a family, that is wealth. And so for us to align ourselves with the ideas of wealth, with the ideas of what goes into conserving wealth, it behooves us to get with it, to be honest. And again, this is coming from a raving lunatic. <laughs> when I came out of college, I was a lunatic. Like I went and lived several years um, in West Africa. 
I was just crunchy. I had dreadlocks for over 20 years. I'm not coming from a space where I don't know what I'm talking about because I've lived the fallout of supporting the Daquans of the world and of feeling as if it was my position in life to help Daquan stand on my back. And so, but as I shift, as I listen to, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so amazed, like I'm stuttering. I'm so amazed at how many black people, for instance, will not even listen to a Blexit rally, will not even listen to a video of Candace. I had someone posting, oh, she's that self-hating. Uh, how is it self-hating to want better for your people, to not want another candidate selling us on EBT and everything else that's related to us being victims? How is it being self-hating to think about yourself as worthy as a Booker T. Washington, who created the Tuskegee, you know, Institute, um, Carver, you know, George Washington Carver, um, the, the great inventors, Madam C.G. Walker. How is it self-hating to be in the mindset of the people who built the Black Wall, uh, Wall Street that were had planes and banks and everything else? And they had much less freedoms than we have now. And yet they created so much more. And even though Daquan is able to sleep with every, you know, Becky and white girl that he has, he's still claiming that he is oppressed, that the man is keeping him down, that he's calling other races of men, the man and not himself. And I don't, I'm not going to fall into that. Um, I did and it ruined my life for several decades, but not doing it now. Yes, they, they do, LaVon. Right, Tracy? Yes. And I enjoyed it at the time because I grew up um, in a wealthy family compared to most people. But, it you know, my parents divorced. My mom was, corp you know, climbing the corporate ladder. I never learned about any black people. So, unfortunately, I rebelled. And I went into black poverty, thinking that that was the way that I could, um, you know, help the black community. You cannot help the black community by staying poor and by being poor. You have nothing to offer. Sorry, not sorry. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so understanding conservative values, we are naturally a conservative people. Madam C.J. Walker who was like one of the first millionaires in America, a black woman, had conservative values. It is not unheard of to be conservative in the sense that you value family. You don't value twerking everywhere. You don't value just anything goes. You value what keeps families safe, what keeps families growing, what keeps families together. That's conservative values and not even being able to have a conversation with somebody that's conservative is a weakness because if your your views are so strong about how terrible white folk are, how terrible, I just listened to this whole video and I would have been cursing all of them out like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And this is young brother and I, and I realize every time I listen to stuff, I have to grow and I have to learn. Because I'm always talking about Daquans. You know, I'm always putting down the average black man, to be honest. Yeah, but you know what, uh, sis, in terms of Thomas Sowell, he is like one of our intellectual giants. And he's in his 70s. And he's been conservative ever since. And most black people don't want to hear it. And that's why most black people stay poor. Um, and it's it's a it's a thing. It's like a real thing. But I let my girls listen to it. I'm raising them on it. And I just watched this panel like I was talking about. There was a little 15-year-old boy. And I'm trying to find his name, honey, because I got a 12-year-old daughter, honey. And this little conservative young black man, 
he was everything. Apparently he has, um, what was his name? He has a YouTube channel. He's conservative. He understands the value of family. He has a mom and a dad in the home. And I'm like, I'm trying to find his dishes. <laughs> I'm trying to like match mate with my kids because I'm like, these are the type of young men that I want for my daughters. I do not want Daquan. I do not want Daquan that was uh, raised by angry Shaquita. Sorry, not sorry. Like I'm, I'm just not. But the thing is, is that if you don't understand the value of conversation, the value of um, opening your horizons, there was a young brother that um, is married to this gorgeous sister, um, or they're engaged, actually. They were on the panel also. I just watched it. And he has a business that's now making, running $8 million a year out of Atlanta, and they're both in the Republican Party. They're both black Republicans. And I'm like, this is what I don't see all of these people who are Democrats and who are talking about all this stuff. I don't see them talking about family values in the way that these young people are who are making mad money. Like they're living their life. They want family structure, family values, a father and a mother in the home. They're not highlighting this strong black warrior woman, mama, who's by herself. They're not being triggered by my posts, like a lot of people that have been on my page, um, you know, and just going off. And I'm like, but well, what, what results do you have? What results do you have with your masculine, democratic, hyper leftist ideology what results do you have because even when you look at people like diddy jay-z beyonce jay-z's message has changed from the time when he first started to the era when now he's in his billions ask yourself why jay-z's message has changed because he's come to understand some things. He's gotten out of hood mentality. He's actually had conversations with people who have money. He's looked at lifestyles of people who have money. And he's been very clear on the components that make and keep money in the family. He's not the same man. He's changed his vision. He's changed his thoughts. And the other dude, Kanye, I don't know what that story is, but he's changed his thoughts, at least publicly. And so I think that it behooves us to not be so stuck in groupthink because our mom was Democrat, our mom, whatever, whatever, and have these rigid walls where you are a slave to ideologies that you don't even understand, that are not serving you. They're not paying your bills. They're not writing off your mortgages. They're not doing any of that. They're not paying off your student loans. But so many people are so, you know, heavily um, married to these ideas and they feel like if they switch up, if they change, then, you know, nobody's going to, their friends aren't going to like them. People are going to, you know, stop associating with them. But in the communities that women who say that they want hypergamy, Women who say that they want to level up, to get into a better situation, um, they understand that they have to open up to certain ideologies that serves the wealthy, that serves wealth, ideologies that serve conservation. Um, and that's a facet that I didn't know about necessarily. I got into it as I walked my life. Oh my God. <laughs> Abina, you're killing me. But that's the truth. So I did not ever imagine that I would consider myself conservative. But when I looked at the true tenets of what being conservative means, I realized that if I think about my daughters, that's what I want for their lives. I'm not going to be out here preaching that my daughters should be baby mamas at age 15 and that they should be out here just seeing what kind of government program they can get. So if I say that I don't want that for my daughters, why would I be professing a lifestyle and politicians who constantly support 
um, black victimization, that you can't live without them, without Hillary and her programs. Sorry, not sorry. Um, and so for me, I had to really look at that. And then I looked at the men that I dated in the past before I even got married. And I realized that the dating world was as it was, but these were Republican men. These were men with conservative values. That's how they got and kept their money. It wasn't from being extra. Hi, Adrienne. Let me see what she said. Oh my God, yes. So she said, Adrienne said, I just found your page and I love it and we have much work to do. And a lot of the work will require self-accountability. Is there racism? Yes. But we had four mothers and four fathers who held on to their families and still flourished. We need to get back to basic principles and unlearn a lot of the ideologies taught or tied to race and class. Thank you. Because I, for, <laughs> I mean, my mother already told me that, you know, Many women back were business owners. They were cleaning. They started their own business, cleaning white people's laundry. Um, my mother grew up on a sharecropper's farm, but she went on to get her PhD from Wharton uh, in Philadelphia. She was an advisor to Jimmy Carter. She was no joke, my mother. And I went the other route, unfortunately, you know, trying to be there for Daquan's. Um, and while she did not teach me pride in our excellence because she was so busy fighting the poverty that she grew up in, but she would not have been able to go from being a, a four and five year old working on a sharecropping farm to going to getting her PhD at Wharton as well as an advisor to a president. I mean top level VP of various hospitals, she would not have been able to do that if it not had been for her conservative values. Um, and I wasted many years of my life behind democratic and high end, high mess, um, militant, you know, pro-blackness and all of that. It ruined my life. It did not help me whatsoever. But I'm getting back to that now. And so she's very pleased <laughs> that I finally got myself together, married well. Um, my husband looks up to her very much being he's already written a book for African-American physicians. And so to meet someone who had a mother who was, uh, you know, spearheaded a lot in the medical community as a black woman in the 70s and 80s was huge for him. And unfortunately, I did not you know, take the fire and from early on and continue on with that Olympic thing because I was so into blackness. I was so into ruining my life, but um, it's never too late. And I can have my daughters learn from their grandmother and from what I finally was able to achieve in my life later in my life. But I finally understood as whereas I had a lot of derision and snarkiness um, from my high achieving mother in the corporate world and in the educational field, but I've had to eat my words. I've had to eat 5,000 humble pies and come back to the realization that these Negroes led me astray. And some of them weren't even Negroes. <laughs> so my last husband was from India. He's a damn Negro. I don't care. Okay. Because my two girls are Indian, East Indian and, you know, African American. But honey, he was a damn Negro. That's all I got to say. He was a Rasta and doing all this nonsense. Um, but nevertheless, I'm just saying, ladies, if you don't open yourself to investigating the values that are really critical for hypergamy, the values that are really critical for getting yourself together. Thank you, sis, Adama. 
if you don't open yourself to the realization that the men that you are going to meet, and my husband is a Democrat, by the way, um, and I've been showing him videos and I took him to the Candace Owens a Blexit rally in Atlanta the other day and he took a lot of notes and I think his mind was blown a little bit because he's very liberal. And it's not to say that wealthy men, you know, you won't find uh, liberal wealthy men. But I think that now that I've been able to show them the mess that's going on and show him the mess that's going on in public schools right now, how they're just making these young children warriors for the Marxist, hyper-militant leftist um, ideology. They don't even understand what they're so emotional about, but they are just hyper emotional, hyper ridiculous. Um, I've got, you know, his daughter who's 15 talking about, oh, well, her whole goal is to be a matriarch. Um, so, in other words, to be a single mother because she doesn't believe that there are any good men out there. And, um, you know, yes, Katia, honey, Rasta ruined my life ruin my life um and so she's 15 but she thinks the world is going to end next week because of some swedish girl talking about climate control i forget her name and she's telling me that there are children in her school who get angry with her because yesterday they were male and today they're female and so they're offended because they said he you know or the now they're a third party or some I don't even know what they call them, some gender fluid thingy or whatever. And these children are dealing with all this at 13, 14, 15 years old. And people are just carrying on in their schools by this whole ideology that you can be a mermaid, you can be a fish, you can be a bear. I think there's like several hundred different gender determinations now. Um, that is not a wealth building determination, honey. Y'all can do what you want and you can play what you want. But what I'm not going to do is sit up here and tell me that because you're a fish, you're a man fish, or you're a female fish, um, and that's your gender, that, you know, you're about to be successful. I don't believe it, and I don't buy it. But they're dealing with that in the public schools. I homeschool my little girls. I'm not doing it, to be honest. I'm not doing it. But she's also got this whole thing where we were having another conversation and bless her heart, but she's like, we have to protect our black men. We we have to do this. We have to protect our black men. Sorry, honey. I'm not protecting a black man. Okay? I'm not protecting a black man. Why don't you have the ideology that the black man should be protecting you? I don't know, because most of the black boys in your school are running behind your white friends, and it's no shade. I get it. I mean, whatever's going on is whatever's going on, but she is clearly a black woman, um, you know, and she's definitely not as, um, her calendar is not as filled as her best friend who is Puerto Rican white girl. And all she dates is black boys. And it was the same thing when my daughter, who's now 25, was in high school. That's what she told me. All the black guys wanted the white girls and the Mexican and, and everything else. It is what it is. But what I'm saying is you, who is being pushed down to the bottom of the total pole, but you've still gotten the education as a young black girl, that you have to be out here protecting the black man from police and the black man from himself. No. That's never a story that I taught my daughters. She learned it in public school, but what my daughters are not doing is protecting any black man out here. That's facts. And y'all better <laughs> that somebody's going to jail. I don't know what is I don't know what's happening. But what my daughters are not going to be doing is out here protecting and marching for black men. What black men need to do is get themselves together and defend black women if that's what they want. I'm for open options. I'm for black women being adored and loved, whoever he is, with high quality, family value, marriage oriented men. That's all I'm for. I'm not out here to protect black men. Okay, because that is not the story 
That's not what helps me. I tried that for 20 years and I saw what I saw what it got me. It got me in zero. Okay, so I'm not teaching younger black girls to do this. I'm not teaching any of that. I'm sorry. Okay, but what I do want to share with you guys is that don't be surprised if when you upgrade your life, when you upgrade your lifestyle, when you fix yourself. Thank you, Keisha. When you fix yourself, you will see that you will be confronted with some ideologies that you are ready for. Sorry. Um, you will be confronted with some ideologies that you weren't ready for. And a lot of them will be conservative values. And are you ready, ladies? It's not about the Coco Chanel purses. It's not about the whatever. But are you ready to take on a different personality, a different being? Are you ready to invest in yourself in the state where you want what's best for you? And what happens if what's best for you is not the Democratic Party? I'm not asking you to join any party. I'm not promoting anything, but I'm saying if you are going to say that you are about this life of leveling up and, you know, meeting different men, they're going to be conservative for the most part. And that's a lot for a lot of people. Some people are just like, oh my God, everybody from five generations back were conservative. I mean, we're Democrats and oh my God, everybody's going to disown me. But there's a whole new movement out here that supports not ratchetness, not how are you a victim, not how can, which program can you get, but it's about you working and being successful through your own values and your own skill sets, and then you protecting what you earn. You protecting what you earn and being so sure of yourself and your family that promotes you and that builds you up and supports you that you are so strong on that that you don't need a government handout because you know the strings that come with it, what comes attached to that. Which billionaire is on government assistant? And if you get to the point of being a billionaire, wouldn't you want to conserve your money? Or are you going to be a billionaire and then give uh nine nine hundred ninety nine million point nine nine away and then have your children grow up um poverty stricken again which billionaire is doing that nobody because they built it themselves they want to maintain it they want to save it for their family they're not looking to be taxed 65 percent talking about oh the rich should give their wealth away oh really because last time i heard when you guys built your own business you didn't want somebody coming and taking your money but we don't think about that in those terms because we don't think of ourselves as wealthy. But once you begin to build wealth, once you begin to build a business from scratch and then you make millions, now you Oprah, somebody's gonna come and tell you to give 80% of your wealth away in taxes and you're okay with it? Is you're only okay with it when you're poor and you don't plan on being anything other than poor. That's the only time you're okay with it. But if you've built your own wealth, or if you love a man who has built his own wealth, you will not be happy and comfortable with people saying that, oh, because you're rich, you should just give all your money away. And that's the difference. And so many women and so many ladies are super gorgeous. They're wonderful. They've done their self-care. They've done their level up. But that mentality has not been challenged yet. That mentality of wealth preservation has not come up. And so you're going to be forced to look at these things. And I encourage you, as I always say, whether it is with my coaching clients or in my group, I always say, live as if before you receive it. And what that means is that you are going to be in a mindset where you are already the feminine, soft, and wealthy wife and have the lifestyle you want, whatever it is you dream of, you deserve the best and you can have it. 
but you need to resonate on and vibrate on those levels before you receive it because like attracts like. And so if you are resonating on those levels and you are vibrating on a level of wealth, sometimes we say, I've been, you know, doing my vision boards. I've been doing my mantras and it's just not happening. I'm on various dating sites and it's just not happening. But what's interesting is that you sometimes don't have any idea what aspect of your life is holding you back. So if you say that you want this level up lifestyle and you want this and you want that, but on the other hand, you have this mentality that keeps saying and keeps agreeing with people who want to steal wealth from the wealthy and give it to the poor who've not yet learned how to manage wealth and how to manage their money. Um, if you have this whole mindset going on, if you're following this whole political ideology, ask yourself, is that working for you? Absolutely. Yes, sis. They take it offshore because they understand. They worked for it. And I, 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 I ask people to look at all aspects of your life. And if you've followed me for any time, you will understand the importance of holistic level up. When I say holistic level up, I mean that it is every aspect of your life. It is every aspect of your life. If you're not leveled up with your thinking and your politics, it's going to be very difficult for you to achieve a level of level up in other aspects of your life, to receive it into your life. And um, I've just been blown away because I decided that I was going to have an open mind and that I was going to listen to conservatives. I was going to listen to it. So if... You know, heaven forbid, life happens and my in-laws pass. They're in their 70s and 80s. And if I know that there are millions, if they pass and it's passed on, and I am of a mindset of conserving for my children, of setting up containers for my children, but then I'm following a government or a group of people who say that, 80% of that wealth should be given to them. And by them, meaning the government, because you know the government is not going to pass on all 80% to the poor or whatever. So if I am to inherit millions into my life, and now I got to give 80% away and I have nothing for my children, what does that say? What does that mean? Because I've been following something that I said, oh, I agree. The rich shouldn't have their money. Don't let them keep their money. You know, they should be taxed 80%. Oh, really? But then when you get in a situation where now you're trying to build intergenerational wealth and now 80% is going to taxes and to the government and to, you know, whoever, um, it's going to be a problem. And that's why I say, Mind the things that you are following, the, the ideologies, because wealth has to be conserved. And if somebody has worked for their wealth, they will want to conserve it. I'm certainly working for my wealth. I'm certainly doing the best I can to amass and build wealth. I do not want my children to be penalized for what I've passed on to them. Exactly, Dr. Kia. And so that's why I'm saying it's, it's, don't get it twisted. Like you're level up, you're level up. Girl, this lip gloss is not working for me on today. <laughs> your level up is holistic. Your level up is a byproduct of your being able to open yourself to experiences that you had not um, previously expected that you would be, um, you know, availing yourself to your level up will require some shifts, some shifts that you might not have even considered because if you haven't actually lived that life, hold on a second. If you haven't actually lived that life, then, you know, um, 
you're going to be surprised. You're going to be greatly surprised. So, sorry, y'all. I just couldn't do it. Sorry. So, our family is coming in this week. My mom is coming in. So, I'm at Lowe's. I have a little cocktail hour with my ladies in my cul-de-sac who I exercise so heavily with and we jogged and it allowed me to lose so much weight but we've kind of fallen off I was traveling back and forth to Atlanta to fix my home in Atlanta for the Airbnb experience and we'd fallen off and we said you know what ladies that's it we got to get together and um have a little cocktail little tea party so we're gonna do that tomorrow um so I went and bought some things at Aldi's and now I'm at Lowe's because I want to paint my bay window um, and finalize some of those things before my mom comes into town on Tuesday. So my husband is like cleaning out the garage and doing different things just to kind of get ready for guests. So I'm here. Um, I get heated about it because ladies, I want the best for you. You know, I want the best for you. I want you guys, excuse me, I want you guys to understand you can have what you want you can have anything that you want you can be in a situation where you understand the value of your growth you understand the value of opening your mind politically um financially opening your groups getting yourself in circles that are valuable to you uh, and understanding that it's going to be a mind-blowing experience. It's not going to be what you thought it was going to be when you first entered into your level up and you first got yourself, you know, involved in, you know, volunteering, different communities, different people um, and experiences. But it's going to challenge you because believe me, I am not the same person I was 10 years ago. I, w I am not the same person I was last year. Like, I did not think, I didn't care about politics. I, I hated it, like, to be honest. But I got myself into a space where I said, you know what? If I could be this open-minded about people going to business conferences and um, other spaces where there would be people that I would interact with and flow with and get myself into a space where I can, you know, flex and, you know, really experience a well-rounded life. If I wasn't ready for that, whether it's going to galas, whether, you know, inviting the board of directors into our home for dinners and cooking for these people and just being so enamored with the gloriousness that is a feminine woman. If I did not believe in that, I would not have been able to come this far. But I have to tell you guys that you got to be ready, like be ready for growth, be ready for challenges and experiences that you would not have even imagined. But it comes from a sense of self-confidence. It comes from a sense of self-awareness, embodying the beauty that you are. Like if you don't embody the universal beauty that you are, the universal ability to adapt and to place yourself into different environments, if you don't do, if you don't get that, like there's, it's, it's, it's a thing. It's really, really a thing. Like if, if you've got to get yourself into the state where you say to yourself, I may not know everything, but I have the ability to adapt and to enjoy and to learn as best I can. And a lot of that will be you shifting ideas, shifting mindset, and shifting your ability to flow within communities, which means fluidity, which means you are not stuck on things. In other words, whether it's a political idea, whether it is a group of friends, whether it's family, none of that are you in a space where you are saying, without these people in my life, I'm nothing or without, you know, whoever it is. You've got to be able to let it go and let people go with love. Let them go. If they are not serving your ultimate goal, 
if they don't understand wealth, if they don't like wealth, if they don't like wealthy people, they've got this whole party line that all wealthy people are evil, let them go. How are you going to include them in your life when your goal is to be wealthy, is to enjoy your life, is to expand and have as many wonderful experiences as you can? How can you allow them into your life if they are against the very lifestyle that you say that you want? You know, and so that has been exactly, Tori, for me, hi, Jocelyn, for me, it's been about fluidity and evolving. Like I never said at any point. And I, <laughs> oh my gosh, I guess people know me by now because I wish somebody would come in. Oh, well, I wish somebody would say, Oh, last year you were saying this and now you're saying, I wish somebody would because I have the right to evolve. I have the right to exactly Jada shift and, you know, develop and grow. I have every right. You are not going to be standing with me before the creator at the end of my life. And I have the right. And so fortunately, nobody says that to me. I guess my energy is such that people don't even try it, but I can only imagine for those who have not yet developed that or if you've got a very opinionated family, um, I understand it can be challenging. But the thing that you have to understand is that the people who want you to stay the same are the people who don't value your happiness and your growth. They are the people who, you know, just want to be comfortable within themselves and they're being very selfish but they're not actually valuing your growth. They're not valuing, valuing you living your best life. Um, and I'm so very fluid with it. I'm, I'm constantly in a space where, honey, if you're not serving the ultimate goal, just generally being a good person, someone who wants to share or bring value to my life or to my children's life, you got to go. Like, it, it just is what it is. And, you know, just like the ladies that I'm going to have our social um, little cocktail hour with tomorrow uh, in my cul-de-sac and in my neighborhood, you know, they're just so encouraging. They're social climbers. Now, both of them work, but, you know, I don't. But they don't diss me as a stay-at-home wife and mom. Um, one lady drives a gorgeous little Mercedes and she's just about her little life and everything. And the other one, you know, she's a teacher, um, but she's just very positive and, and it's just, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good feeling. It's a good way to go about your life, to expand and to socialize. And I did share a video on my Facebook page about, you know, ladies who, um, as mothers, how isolated we are. Um, we get so busy in our lifestyle and we spend so much time on social media, but when do you call the people in your environment? When do you, you know, put together little social events? When do you, you know, express, you know, your human emotions? When do you have people witness your life? And it caught me because I am definitely at a space where I'm guilty. I spend a lot of time on social media um, just because I'm promoting my groups, I'm promoting my passions, but at the same time, and so I got on the phone today and I called a couple of girlfriends and followed up with the women that I'm going to be having our little social um, event tomorrow, our little cocktail event, and I'm so excited. So, uh, and I realized that I got it, I got to catch myself again. If I was close to ideas, if I was close to ideologies, I would not um, have reached out. I would not have done that. I would not have gotten myself into a space where I want to connect with human beings. And when you're connecting with human beings, to tie it back to the subject of this video, is that some of these human beings are going to be conservatives. They're going to be about conserving, conserving family values, um, faith-based lifestyle. Uh, conserving marriage. They're going to be about, you know, um, soft women and femininity and masculine, um, you know, sensibilities and the importance of gender and gender roles and the importance and how it informs our coming generations. That's what they're going to be about. Um, and most likely they are successful people 
who are contributing to society and employing other families and who are making a way in their life. And so I just want to encourage you ladies, don't be shocked and surprised when you interact with people as you are, you know, dealing with hypergamy and dealing with, you know, upgrading your own lifestyle and leveling up that you're going to meet people who are conservative by nature and they don't hate you. <laughs> they don't. Uh, but it's about how can you release, you know, your misgivings and how can you also lean into the great value that we had as a people um, decades ago, which somehow seems to have been lost. How can you bring value to that? How can you explore and how can you raise extraordinary beings in a very um, mediocre society? And I said it because <laughs> that's my thing is like, how can I raise extraordinary beings, extraordinary daughters and one son in a very mediocre society where everything is dumbed down, where people, it's all about, you know, Instagram and um, reality TV shows. How can I create extraordinary beings? Because they will automatically float to the top which is what I want them to do. And I want them to be like an oasis in a sea of mediocrity, which means that unfortunately, because I wish it was a world of excellence, but it's not. But so many young girls and young boys have are being raised on or not raised on very mediocre or you know low level mindset and thinking. So if you have a child who is, you know, well groomed who is educated, who has etiquette, who has understanding, who values conservative concepts, they will inevitably rise to the top and find their people. And that's what I want for my girls uh, and my daughter and my son and, um, and my granddaughter because I'm a grandmother and that's what I want for them. And I'm not shy about it at all. I don't feel any type of way um, to say that I want more for my children. Uh, and I don't want them to go through what I went through when I didn't need to because I didn't grow up that way. I grew up very well. And um, unfortunately, I chose a bunch of nonsense and mess. Um, yes, they do need protection. And that's where our values and our social system. And we literally sit down and talk about it as if it's one of our homeschool lessons. Like my girls do not miss the opportunity. I don't shield them from things and you know, single moms sharing their stories. I tell them about my story. I remind them where we've been and um, understanding that just the simplest things as you're thinking you need to be out here protecting a man or that you need to be out here boohooing for Daquan um, is going to get you <laughs> a medal somewhere because it's not. And so I'm very clear about it. Now, of course, they have to make their own decisions and they may make some mistakes, but at least I will be able to say that I did my damnedest, I did my best. I'm not hiding anything from you guys. Um, and, oh, thank you, Jocelyn. And and it's very real out here. And just as simple as opening your legs to the wrong guy, to the wrong Daquan, will ruin your life, at least for another 10 years, five years, 10 years. But you still have the ability to recuperate, but why put yourself through that? Um, why? So, at any rate, ladies, let me go. I know my husband's probably like, okay, where is she? And um, I need him to put gas in this car because <laughs> I don't do gas. I don't put gas in my car. So I drive it home and I say, guess what? It's almost on empty. Can you help Can you help me out? And he, go, he goes and takes it to the gas station. So I'm in my little beloved car. I love my little car, my little birthday gift, my truck so to speak so i'm loving it loving life it's saturday life is good ladies so i'll see you guys soon all right bye now